this week, I started laying in the groundwork for 52bible.com. Yes, 52 Bible stories. And and only because you're listening to the podcast, you get to find out these awesome things that I'm doing. So I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to list two other things that I did this week. And then I'm going to tell you how I feel so unproductive. And I'm going to whine and moan and let you be my sounding board for how... Uh... Thank you, George. Your interruption was right on schedule, and you're absolutely right. I'm supposed to say, I can't complain. That's the yuppie way to to do anything is to get away with it by saying that you're not doing it while you're doing it. That's the yuppie way to complain. I can't complain <clears throat> after I just complained. 52bible.com. The, the concept is... Well, I, I decided on the number from Nehemiah. He built the wall in 52 days. And I'm going to set up several series of 52 Bible stories. And the goal with all of them is to cover the Bible front to finish in 52 sessions. And there'll be different sizes. There might be key vocabulary words. Parents could use this to teach their children. ESL students could use it to learn English. There will be different language level versions. I mean, multiple series, but each series will have 52 stories in the series. So you could cover it all in 52 days. You could cover it once a week. The, the, I, the, this is my basic idea. Well, th- this was largely inspired by an ongoing need that I, I've run into, especially in Asia, people who just, they don't know the Bible. Um, and th- they're fascinated by it. I mean, the Bible has rich stories. There, it, It's real from history. It survived persecution. Uh, even the Chinese government likes the Bible as long as it's a known translation. And that's why the Chinese government will even publish and print the Bible for you if you ask them to. Smuggling Bibles in China doesn't make sense. Um, At least not not in these days. Uh, You know, the the past decade or so. There's a lot that I don't know about what goes on in China. There's there's this, everyone thinks there's an expert and and they are an expert on China. So, anyhow. I'm seeing a need for good Bible study. Even, Even in high school, I didn't no, I mean, I, I was a Bible chump, a Bible thumping church boy, and I didn't know the the basics of the Bible. So I'm, it's gonna be fifty two Bible stories, fifty two Bible dot com to keep it. I could have done fifty two Bible stories dot com, but I didn't want to do that. So I did fifty two Bible dot com to keep it short, because you know those those characters in the tweets. We'll see how it goes. Fifty two Bible. That kind of see one blank piece of paper to act like I'm looking at the next item on the list here. Moving eyes back as if I'm looking over in through my spectacles, which I'm not wearing. And the next, uh, oh yes, from Asia with Love.net. It's live and going. You can subscribe. I'm starting. I've 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 got a YouTube channel which I'm going to be putting related videos on. I've got a Tumblr account. Uh, that's going to be getting its own things, probably some gifts and such. I've got in, uh, does it have an Instagram? Yes, it does. It has an Instagram and I'm going to be pushing stuff to this and there'll be photos and there'll be fun little videos and such, but the meat of it is in the subscription. Three stories a day or three stories a week, excuse me, three days, you know, one story a day and $3 a month. And those stories are the meat of it all. So, from Asia with Love.net. Like, subscribe, get, go, go pay. We're using the Stripe Payment Gateway. That's, that's, that's pretty awesome. And I finally got the bee in my bonnet. When I launched this thing, some friends said, Jesse, that's awesome, but when are you going to do guide? You know, go watch the video. Guides.com. G-U-Y-Z-E.com. Facebook video. I got a YouTube video explaining it. Men's fat, unified apparel for men, I think is what it was, what the theme was. 
So I've got t-shirts I've been designing and it's time to get those things going. Now, after that, after getting from Asia with love live and going and after launching guys.com, I, and, and finishing up a lot of stuff with pink, right? Uh, right. Pink. I don't feel like I've been productive. Now, maybe I'm just a workaholic, but I just really don't feel like I'm getting enough done. I, I mean, sitting here on my desk. Now, this is a real, pa- this is what a real paper sounds like. And, and I'm not even touching it to the microphone. That's just an awesome condenser mic doing its job. But I've, I've got uh, another font here that I've drawn out for the, the basic concept of it. And I've got to get that going for more graphic design stuff. So we'll see where that goes. I'm, I'm just in productivity mode. And you know what I'm doing because you're listening to the podcast. Now, I want to share with you <clears throat> an idea Something that sort of came to me earlier in the week that I wrote about. So I've written about this earlier, and I'm going to read this to you, what I typed earlier in the week. I've come to realize something. In the cultural sense, there are really only three... uh, You could think of them as countries or not countries, but in some sense, there are only three countries in the world in some some sense christianity islam and communism all other types or types of countries anyway all others will eventually convert to one of these three and i believe islam and communism will conflate they will they're going to get sandwiched and smashed together. Smushed is probably a more appropriate term. No, no, no. Smushed is is um, stepping on the marshmallow. Smashed is ramming a car into a wall with a dummy. There's there's a difference. Or or hitting something with a sledge. Yeah, smash is hitting something with a sledgehammer. Smushed is uh, is is what you do when you make a s'more and you get that that you know that that chocolate and that. I mean, those crackers and the hot marshmallow that just melts and that's smushing. Now, some of these different, some countries within these three groups are open, such as Malaysia, Hong Kong, Canada, but many are closed, such as China, Iran, and the United States or Cuba. As we look at communism. Well, China's a, I guess China's communism. I guess they're, 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 they're like, free market communism, if that's not a pure oxymoron, but a socialist, whatever that's supposed to mean. Most, most ideas in the world pool within these three. Now, the primary thing in all of this is that it's generally unethical to interfere in one of the others. There are Christians inside of all three, even inside the Islamic thing. And when, when someone has grown up in one of these, if he tries to go and spread the gospel by himself in one of the others, he won't know the cultural issues, he won't know the problems, and he's going to make a mess and step on toes. Communicate with Christians within the others. Paul talked about not building another man's foundation. So I, 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 the Christians in China need to talk about Christianity in China. We do not need to be interfering in others. I try to stay within my Christianity group. I'm out of time and I've got to get to the point. We would think that someone who accurately predicted a future event should be the talk of the press. All the pundits should want to pick his brain. All the major media anchors should want him as a guest on their shows, right? But the dirty little secret of the news industry's intoxicating power is its power to create news, not report it. If you predicted an outcome different from the mainstream, you don't know more about events than the pundits. You are their enemy who shaped events how you wanted them rather than letting them shape events how they wanted. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele jessesteel.com